What's up guys and welcome to my Sega Saturn System Buyer's Guide episode. Here we are going to go over the various different systems released during the Sega Saturn's run. For a machine that is generally accepted to have failed commercially, it had a surprisingly large amount of variations. Of course the system sold best in Japan during its life, so this region would see the most variety. If you're in the market for a Saturn for the first time, or haven't been keeping up, these units can be overwhelming at first. Which one is best? Do any of them present an advantage over the others? In this episode we are going to go over the different models and talk about which ones I prefer and recommend. Welcome to my Sega Saturn System Buyer's Guide. The Sega Saturn was originally launched in November of 1994 in Japan. These units are the common gray systems you see all over eBay. They are marked by blue oval power and reset buttons, a blue CD door open button, as well as black accents on the front and cartridge slot cover. This was the original unit that I imported at launch right here. It has been modified with a region select switch and a mod chip that allows it to play backups, but outside of that, the hardware is 100% original and has provided me with going on 24 years of flawless gameplay. Because these units are common, they also tend to be one of the cheapest means to obtain a system complete in box. Even with shipping, you can often find them for around the $100 to $150 mark. Loose systems can be even cheaper if you patiently watch the auctions. Also released in Japan was a version of the machine by Victor, and labeled the V-Saturn. These units sport some different coloring, as well as a slightly different molding around the buttons than the launch gray Sega systems. Otherwise, they are mostly the same physically. The BIOS for the V-Saturns have a different startup animation, saying V-Saturn instead of Sega Saturn. I own one of these units as well, and have had no trouble with it at all. These units are fairly common among the third-party release Saturn systems. You can get one complete in box for $150 to $200. It comes with a Victor branded controller as well. Not to be left out, Hitachi would also get their own Saturn series going. These units were sold in high-end electronic stores and came packed with video CD cards. They feature a two-toned black and gray body and pinkish white oval buttons but otherwise kept the same overall molding of the Sega and Victor variants. The BIOS here also has the best startup of any of the Sega Saturn systems in this episode. I absolutely loved it. These units were produced in relatively small amounts because of the much higher price tag on them. A complete in box machine will cost you well over $200, potentially doubling that if it's in really good condition. When the Sega Saturn made its way west, Sega would give the system a makeover. It retained the same mold as the Japanese units, but were now all black, even the buttons. Sega would also change up the startup jingle a bit. The North America and European versions were largely the same color-wise, with the NTSC and PAL signals, as well as the AC power standards, changed according to the region. Tectoy would bring the Saturn to Brazil, with the first run of machines again being all black. US launch Sega Saturn's complete in-box with the Virtua Fighter pack-in have actually gotten a bit rare, with a good condition unit in the $200 range. The systems we just went over were expensive to produce for Sega, so it was no surprise when the system underwent an overhaul and we would see what would come to be known as the Saturn Model 2 in 1996. These units would retain the overall size and shape of the Model 1 systems, but have a number of changes including round buttons, different accent lines across the top, and the removal of the CD access LED. There would be a number of these types of systems released by Sega themselves. The common white model is the one you'll see most, and they are also one of the cheapest to come by. Often going for less than even the gray system, these guys can usually be had for under $150 complete in box. Although it has a new revision in terms of the BIOS, the startup is exactly the same as the older Sega release Saturns. The biggest problem with this Saturn is of course the white plastic tends to turn yellow and brown if exposed to the right environment. 
An eBay search of these systems will often return a pile of them already discolored. You may want to keep this in mind should you want one. Sega would also release two translucent Saturn systems in the Model 2 line. The first is known as the This Is Cool system, as well as what is known as the Derby Stallion Saturn. These two units have slightly different tones and color usage, and the Derby Stallion system came of course with the Derby Stallion game. These systems are among the last Saturn systems released, and the rarest among the Sega branded systems. Again, although they have updated BIO software, they have the same startup as the other Sega branded Japanese systems. Finding either one of these complete in box is going to cost you. Even on their best days, these both will typically be well north of $300 in good condition. Victor and Hitachi would both get in on the Model 2 redesign as well. Hitachi would retain the same basic color design as its Model 1 release, also keeping the video CD card as a pack-in. Victor would opt for a complete change-up in color scheme, with the Model 2 V Saturn now in a lighter gray than before, as well as three different colored buttons for the power, reset, and CD door opener. The startup animation would remain the same as the systems before, and the price of these units reflect the Model 1 variants as well. V Saturns tend to be cheaper complete, while the Hitachi Saturns tend to go for much, much more. When the Model 2 systems made their way west, Sega would again adopt the all-black color scheme. Even the European model would be black again, but this time the buttons would be colored gray as the standalone difference. Both these releases would retain the startup jingles of their Model 1 counterparts. Tectoy would again step up and release the Model 2 Saturn in Brazil. They would take a different approach than Sega of America, however, and adopt some of the Japanese releases, such as the White System and the Translucent Derby Stallion System. Many of these would be heavily modified to the standards of the region, particularly PAL-M, which is not directly compatible with either NTSC or Standard PAL. Outside of Japan, the Saturn would have a presence in other Asian markets too. In Hong Kong, Japanese units would be reboxed and given 220 volt power supplies. Some of these would make their way to other countries in the region, packed in with the video CD card to appeal to the thriving market there. You rarely see these guys on eBay, especially complete, but they are out there and may interest you if you want to own them all. No system would be any fun to talk about without the rare and wonderful stuff being mentioned. The Saturn has its fair share of these, particularly in Japan and other Asian regions. The first is the mythical Samsung Saturn, which was released in South Korea. This unit is directly branded by Samsung and all black in color like the US systems. This system is the only Saturn to my knowledge to sport a power supply that accepts 110 and 220 volts AC, and it was packed with a region converter cartridge that allowed it to play Japanese games. These units were rare even back then, and even more so today. A loose unit can go for $1,000 plus, with a complete in box system going for thousands more. It's one of the few things I still want to add to my Sega Saturn collection. Lastly, I've saved the Saturn system I've longed for since I first heard about it in the mid 90s, some 20 plus years ago. Hitachi would release perhaps the most compelling product in the episode with its Navi High Saturn. Part portable Saturn, part karaoke machine, part car GPS device, the Navi High Saturn is perhaps one of the best examples of a video game machine going to the extreme with add-ons and extra functionality. Like the other Hitachi release Saturns, this one came with a video CD card packed in. You could also get an LCD attachment for the system that you could display the games on. The GPS attachment would also work with the screen, making it one of the first in-car GPS devices I'd ever seen. The power supply was external, with car adapters available if you wanted to mount the system in your vehicle. There are a ton of karaoke related buttons on the system, and the entire molding and shape was changed from the normal Saturn. It was produced in extremely small amounts in 1995 and carried a price tag of nearly $1,500 at retail. And if you think that's expensive, just try getting one today complete in box and in good condition. 
you'll pay thousands more. Buying a Saturn for the first time is relatively easy. There are affordable options out there for most of you, and the differences between units is really left up to preference and your personal needs. I will give you this warning, however. Just because a system is simplified as a Model 1 or Model 2 doesn't mean they all carry the exact same electronics inside. Aside from the big cosmetic change between Model 1 and Model 2 Saturns, each underwent various revisions on their internals. Starting at VA0 with the launch Saturns, these motherboard revisions number all the way up to VA15, as far as I can tell. Some revisions were small, and sometimes as simple as moving around components. Other revisions are major, integrating multiple chips into one, or daughter boards directly into the main board. There are also different model CD drives across the Saturn line. Made by JBC, Hitachi, and Sanyo, I count no less than 12 variants here. You'll need to know what you have if you plan on using a mod chip in your Saturn, Note it mainly by a 20 or 21 pin designation. Most of you won't care about these technical differences between the various revisions, but there are a few genuine concerns. Saturn Model 2s with the VA10 to VA15 mainboards have an integrated sound block which has known issues with a few games, such as the Japanese version of OutRun. There are also some in the community that claim the Model 1 Saturns have better video quality than the Model 2 Saturns. While this is likely more a mainboard revision issue, I have looked at the evidence and come away unconvinced that many will care for the minute difference this appears to have. Sega Saturn RGB looks awesome, no matter which revision you have.